Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Saturday, the 23rd of December. Now, I want to review excess deaths, which remain high in the vast majority of our countries throughout 2023. Now, the fact that this isn't being discussed on mainstream media or legacy media, the fact that this is not top of the agenda in Parliament, really begs the question, why is this not being discussed on mainstream media? Why is this not top of the agenda in Parliament and Senate and Congress or whatever? It really is getting a bit let's use the word strange that this is not being discussed. Now, I've got some pretty hard data for you this morning um, that I've been working on for a little while now. Um, this is mostly from, I'm going to concentrate on 2023, but we'll look at 2022 as well. Uh, Organisation for Economic uh, for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD stat. So pretty well recognised site. Now, I have been taking data from quite a few sites like CDC, Office for National Statistics, um, quite a few others, our world in data. But the OECD data is consistent. This is not some aberration. This is happening. And it's on a huge scale, totally huge scale. Let's uh, dive in straight away with Australia. Now, for weeks uh, 1 to 34 in 2023 in Australia... There was 14,710 excess deaths, 16.8% above what we would expect based on the 15 to 19, 2015 to 2019 average. So 16.8% more deaths than we would expect in Australia in the first 34 weeks of 2023. In incredible, really. Um, now, the COVID deaths, uh, according to the Australian authorities or according to OECD, just under 5,000. So we can see that only a minority of these deaths were COVID deaths. Now, these deaths that are attributed to COVID, uh, of course, we're not going to go into the debate of with COVID or from COVID, but the vast majority of these people, pretty well all of these, had significant uh, age factors or comorbidities for the vast majority of people. Me last month, for example, COVID is a relatively minor disease. It knocks you off for a week or two, but it's it's not um, it's it's not a, a life threatening disease for the vast majority of people. So um, I suspect that these are people in vulnerable risk groups primarily. Uh, Australia, twenty twenty two, the whole year weeks one to fifty two, uh, the number was twenty nine thousand seven hundred thirty eight, eighteen point seven percent above what we would expect. Add the two together and you get 44,448 excess deaths in Australia. So, you know, we're looking at about 17, 18% excess deaths in Australia. Is this an isolated case? Of course not. Let's go on and look at uh, Austria. Weeks 1 to 44, 2023, 4,444, 6.5% above what we would expect. Is this uh, another... Uh, Unusual case, not by any means. Let's go in and look at Canada. Um, Canada, 2023 data. Uh, so first uh, 33 weeks, it's all that's available. 28,400 Canadians died more than we would expect. 16.7% more than we would expect. COVID deaths in Canada attributed to 4,613. And as we said, that's the upper estimate. But of course, if we compare that 4,613 with the 28,400, again, we see that the vast majority of deaths are not COVID related. We cannot blame this on COVID. There is other factors or factor factors, probably, uh, almost certainly um, contributing to this. But it's uh, it's just everywhere, virtually everywhere. We'll see there are some exceptions. Canada 2023, it was 61,000 excess deaths, 22.3% above average. Add the two together, excess deaths in Canada, 89, nearly 90,000 uh, excess deaths. Denmark, weeks 1 to 44, 3,052, 6.9% above average. <clears throat> and again, what, less, maybe just over 10, 11% of those attributable to, um, to COVID. Denmark 2022, it was 11% uh, excess deaths. And you add the two together for a small country, you get 8,923 excess deaths during those two years. And of course, this is when Omicron was uh, around, much less uh, deadly disease. Finland, 10.5% um, more deaths than we would expect. 
in the first 44 weeks of 2023. France, uh, 22,268, 4.9% more than we would expect uh, for COVID deaths, again, less than a quarter. So 5,565 deaths attributed to COVID, uh, 22,268 uh, 22, excess deaths. So we can see that the vast majority of these are not COVID deaths. France 2022, it was 11.9% uh, above what we would expect with 71,000 excess deaths. Germany, uh, first, first 44 weeks of 2023, uh, 59,000 excess deaths, 7.7% 7 .7 above average. 2022, it was 14.9% above, above uh, average. Um, dealing with really high numbers of excess deaths, and as we'll see, these are, are wartime levels of excess deaths uh, in, in many search situations. Um, right, we'll go on. Greece, 5.2% um, more than we would expect first 44 weeks of 2023. Iceland, um, weeks 1 to 44, 2023, 11.5% more deaths than we would expect. Tiny population, of course, in Iceland. They attribute no deaths to COVID, so all of these deaths would be non-COVID, according to the uh, OECD report on Iceland. Um, it just shows the way that different countries are uh, monitoring and, and registering this differently. We can't really compare country with country, but we, I think we're starting to see a trend of massive excess deaths in 2022 continued as far as we have data throughout 2023 why is the silence deafening why israel um israel uh weeks 1 to 44 2023 11.8 percent more deaths than we would expect covid deaths uh, 640 so again that's the covid deaths that's the excess deaths the vast majority not COVID deaths. Israel 2022, 15.4% above the average that would be expected based on the five-year average. And uh, because of population growth in many areas, these are minimum. These are minimum figures. So the excess deaths are actually potentially higher because we're comparing to five years with a slightly lower population. Italy... Um, now, Italy, interesting. Italy, a bit of an exception. So, first 44 weeks, uh, basically what we would expect, uh, basically no real percentage change, 0.28. Interesting. Are they collecting data differently in Italy? Is the OECD, the or source of the OECD data differently? Uh, but there are a few other outliers as well. That outlier is harder to explain. So... Um, perhaps some anomalies in data collection there, but I wanted to include it in because we don't want to give a distorted picture as many, unfortunately, do. Um, Netherlands. Um, first 44 weeks, 11.3% more deaths than we would be expected. In 2022, it had been 132 Again, that's for the whole of 2022. 13.2% more deaths than we would expect. New Zealand, first 44 weeks of 2023, 14.5% um, more deaths than we would expect, 3,960 actual people dying, more than we would expect. In 2022, it had been 17.6% more than we would expect. Um, don't worry, <clears throat> it's worse when we get to the UK and the US. Norway, 5.7% more than we would expect 2023, 12.5% more than we would expect in 2022. Portugal, 6.3% more than we would expect. Spain, 3.7% more than we would expect. Switzerland, 3.9% more than we would expect in 2023. Now, coming on to the UK, um, weeks 1 to 44, 2023, where we have data, 49,389 number just rolls off the tongue doesn't it 9.44 percent more than we would expect these are excess deaths covid deaths according to the uk again i don't believe for a moment it's that many directly attributable to covid but we can see that there's many more deaths uh, not attributable to covid uk in 2022 we lost 52,514 more than we would expect 9.26 percent Add the two together, 2022 plus 2023, we get 101,903 excess deaths 
in the United Kingdom during those periods of time. Now, I kind of hesitated to put this in, but I've done it, so I'm going to give it to you. Height of the Blitz, the bombing in the Second World War, 1940 to May 1941. Civilian deaths were 40,000. Terrible. But we lost 100,000 in these two years. We've lost the first 44 weeks of the year just shy of 50,000 just for the first 44 weeks of 2023. And, of course, the, the, the Blitz just completely uh, influenced British culture. You know, this is what I was brought up with, this legacy. There'll be bluebirds over the White Cliffs of Dover. Um, this is just massive in British culture. Maybe not so much now, but uh, certainly my generation. Um, and yet way more excess deaths. In 1940, we saw the country turned upside down. Children evacuated to various parts of the country. Massive defences put in place. The country on a complete war footing. Now, what do our current generation of politicians do? Walk out the chamber when someone tries to talk about it. What the heck is going on here? Total civilian deaths in World War II, 70,000. So the last couple of years... Excess deaths for reasons that aren't being explained, aren't even being addressed for questions that aren't even being asked. More deaths than civilian UK deaths in World War Two. We lost a lot more combatants than that, but they were civilian deaths. United States. Um, week 1 to 37, 2023, the OEC data. Um, 155,000 more Americans died than we expect, attributable to COVID, 76,000. Again, quite how accurate that is, we don't have full data, but we can see a lot of people died. That's not attributable to COVID. 7.8% more than we would expect dying. In 2022 in the United States, it was uh, getting on for half a million, 495,749, 17.53% above what we would expect. Add together the two years, so the 155,000 that died in 2023, first 30, uh, that's only the first 37 weeks, of course, where we have data. Uh, the getting on half a million that died in 2022, we get 651,512. Now, again, this is sort of my era time uh, being brought up during the Vietnam War. Um, Total U.S. National Archive, the U.S. National Archive showed that 58,220 U.S. soldiers died during that appalling conflict. So we have a situation here where we've lost 650,000 Americans, um, more, than, more than 10 times more than died in the Vietnam era. In the Vietnam era, rightly, there was massive uh, demonstrations over the whole country. Um, the whole uh, anti-war movement that eventually, eventually America did leave Vietnam. Uh, um, but a total of 58,222 terrible, of course, casualties, but way dwarfed by the excess deaths in 2022 and 2023. As I say, more than 10 times more excess deaths. And yet, what do we hear about this from mainstream politicians and mainstream media? I think you're starting to understand my confusion. Now, other other anomalies. Hungary was uh, 2023. Uh, deaths were less 3.2 percent less than would be expected. Poland, it was basically what we would expect, uh, basically zero percent, 0.13. Slovak Republic, um, 1.54 percent less deaths than we would expect. Sweden. Um, basically what we would expect, 0.6 excess deaths. So um, this site says uh, these data present it, presents the latest data on all-cause death statistics, excess mortality and COVID deaths by week for all OECD countries for which data is available. And you can download this. You can download the spreadsheet of uh, deaths in 2023, 2022. This is what I did. And download the, the, the spreadsheet straight into Excel. It's really easy. Uh, even I can do it, um, for uh, for COVID deaths, which, of course, we know might well be exaggerated. 
Uh, this baseline could be considered a lower estimate of the expected number of deaths since both population growth and ageing population will be expected to push the number of deaths observed each year, to push up the number of deaths each year. For example, New Zealand saw its population grow by around 9% since 2015, with the number of aged people 65 and over uh, increasing by 18%. Right, so there we have it. <clears throat> Why is there a deafening silence? Why do MPs walk out of the chamber when this is discussed? It's enough to make you suspicious. It really is enough to make you suspicious. Why don't the members of parliament even listen to the detailed arguments put forward? Um, if you know the answer to that question, do let me know. Um, now, on this screen here, so what we see here, this is, this is the uh, COVID vaccine dose administered per thousand people for Europe. And we see that in 2023, there was a lot less, a lot less vaccines given. It's not to say there couldn't be effects from vaccines that were given the year before or the year before the programme started round about here. So Europe, we see that the number of vaccines given in 2023 are less and uh, the United States, likewise, people kind of voting with the feet there, really, and taking less uh, COVID vaccines. Um, should we leave it there? Should we do some? I, I think I'll just tell you something else. I've just got, I've just got some notes here. Just um, I've got a list here of the Bradford Hill criteria. We know how to work these things out. We know how to infer causality from correlation. Austin Bradford Hill, famous British epidemiologist. We can look at the strength, how big the correlations, uh, how, how big is the correlation. We can look at consistency, different people in different places, reproducibility. Well, I think we've just met that criteria by looking at all these different countries. Whatever's happening here is happening in all these countries around the world. Um, specificity, lack of other explanations. You know, you get some things that would explain it in some countries, but they don't apply to everywhere. So, um, you know, the, 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 there's a opioid crisis in the States, but there is problems in this country, but less so, less so. You know, it, it's, you know, these simplistic factors don't explain it. We need to, we know Austin Bradford Hill's told us what to do. Lack of other explanations. Temporality, the effect must be followed by the cause. What has happened in the past that leads to the cause of the excess deaths? Biological gradient, dose-response relationship. What has been given more of that results in a particular result? Plausibility is the feasible mechanism for what's causing the damage. Coherence between epidemiology and laboratory findings, is that there? Again, we have many, many aspects of this that could be considered. Experiments are occasionally available. Analogy. Similarity with other known situations. Reversibility may be observed depending if the damage is permanent. And what you often find is that something that permanently damages one person, thankfully, might not permanently damage another person. We have the tools. We have the Austin Bradford Hill criteria. Why aren't they being used? Pretty strong working hypotheses could be developed. Um, in about 10 minutes and these could be tested using the Bradford Hill criteria and yet deafening silence it's enough to make you suspicious okay we'll leave it there um, now if anyone wants um, books if you're getting bored um, these are available for free download my books um Claire Craig's event book, just in a big series with Claire. Excellent book. This is the best book I've read on the pandemic by Dr. Claire Craig. You have to pay for that one. I'll put the link in it. Uh, thankfully, uh, mine are available for free download. Uh, that one, physiology, that one on pathophysiology, I'll put the link. Free download. Download them, print them out, do whatever you want. Um, they're in the public domain now. And this one, if you live in the UK, I've still got a few hundred in hard copy if you actually want a physical uh, copy of that. Do download them, keep reading, keep learning. The interactions between the body and the, uh, the environment, shall we say, 
interactions between the body and things in the environment are totally fascinating. And um, that's what, I guess, physiology is and pathophysiology is. Very interesting subjects, but the point is we can apply these and actually improve our health, health, and maybe even identify things that are killing us in large numbers all over the world. Quite incredible. We'll leave it there. Um, I managed to read quite a few hundred, a few hundred comments today, so do leave a comment. Tell me what you, uh, what your thinking is. I think it's important to put this, put questions into the public domain because of the we're being let down by other communicators, in my view. So it's just those numbers buzzing through me. They, 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 you know, each of each of those numbers is a human being. It's just and and you. I'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you for watching.